Nation of IMG coverage. Live from Buck and Jimmy's on Eastern Avenue in New Brunswick, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Your chance to talk Rutgers football with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. I have Flood 44. That's 855 Flood 44. <clears throat> now we go inside Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick. Alongside Coach Kyle Flood, here's Chris Carlin. Eric Legrand as well. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Kyle Flood Show. We are midway through the 2013 campaign. Chris Carlin alongside Eric Legrand and the coach Kyle Flood. Rutgers preparing for the University of Houston this week. Hey, good to see you. Hey, good to see you too, Chris and Coach. Coach, how we doing? It's great to be back at Brother Jimmy's. Another out. Fine. It seems like it's been almost a half a year since we had a chance to be one and zero. So it's, uh, <laughs> with all the bye weeks this year and the stop start of the season, it's uh, it's just great to be back in the routine of a practice week. Uh, brought with us, I think they got a shot of it for uh, on TV there. The the game ball uh, from the win against Eastern Michigan for Eric Legrand on his retirement yep. ceremony. <laughs> and uh, and in honor of Big E, we have. As many of the defensive linemen here in the back corner that would uh, that I'll our class I schedules would <laughs> permit. <laughs> so We've got them all in attendance tonight. We, we got just about all of them here, and we may have a couple more rolling in here after a class or two. But uh, but it's exciting after spending so many years feeding offensive linemen. <laughs> it really warms my heart to be able to feed some defensive linemen for the first time. See, I knew you like this down low, coach. Get some, get some recognition. Well, Rutgers at 4-2 and two on the season. First of all, let's take care of some business. We want you to be a part of the show tonight, so please give us a call at 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. You can tweet us your questions for Coach Flood as well, at our football. That's at our football on Twitter. So as we said, 4-2, and 1-1 one and one in the conference, coming in, uh, as we said, a little bit of time off following the game at Louisville. Houston at 5-1. and one. They are 2-0 and oh in the conference, and they are coming off a loss, their first of the season, and a wild one against BYU this past weekend, very similar to a couple of the games that uh, Rutgers has played this season. First of all, with the time off, with the bye week, and, and extra time, so to speak, with the extra couple of days, uh, how did you handle it timing-wise with the team? I think the, the first thing we needed to do was really look at where we were. And, and we certainly were disappointed that we, we weren't able to be 1-0 and when we played that Louisville game. Uh, but the bye week came in and it gave us an opportunity to really evaluate the first half of the season. Because I don't, I don't believe in momentum week to week in football. The, the schemes and the matchups, they're just too different. Within a game, there is momentum, but not really within a season. And I think we're really excited about some of the things we've done, but we also see some areas that we know we have to get better in. And the bye week allows us to address that. We've got some young guys playing on the outside at those corner positions, but they're talented and they're eager. And I think the bye week gave us a chance to really advance their knowledge of what we're trying to do in the defense. How do you see some of the players? How did they get over this pretty much the one and not being able to go one and oh this past week? How did they handle that going into the bye week and those few extra days, as you said, Chris? Had, had they been able to get over? Are you still seeing it in them or down there focused on Houston? I think we're focused on Houston. And and as I said, we're, we're disappointed, but uh, but I made a point the next day. We met with the team and and we made the corrections, and and, the, and they'll be they'll never be. There's no uh, moral victories when you don't win. So, but we do have to evaluate what we did well, what we didn't do well, and then we got to get ready to go because it's a long season. We're at the halfway point. You can only control it week to week. So right now we're in the Houston season. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going to happen over the next six games nationally and within our own conference. I think you started to see that last week when we weren't playing. So any team that does anything but focus on the one team that they're playing. You, you do yourself a great disservice. So I, I've sensed that kind of urgency. I've sensed that kind of focus from the team this week. And I, and I think we're all excited to get back down in that stadium. Let's uh, get into a couple of personnel issues that have changed since uh, the game. You had Lou Toller go down with an injury in that game. And Ian Thomas decided to make a change. And he's going to now pursue a career in baseball at another school. So things have 
changed somewhat dramatically in your secondary right now. What have you seen from Anthony Chaffee and Adir Barnwell, the two freshmen, Delon Stevenson as well as he starts to figure into the plans? Yeah, we've already we are already started playing the deer, and uh, yep. and Anthony was playing for us on special teams. Delon was working his way towards that, and really the the combination of Ian deciding to play baseball and and, and Lou uh, breaking his arm, uh, it really forced that that process to move a little quicker. And I think you see those young guys make some plays in that Louisville game that really are exciting for the future of our program. And, and they're not the only two young guys that are playing. We've got quite a few. I think we've got uh, six or seven true freshmen and. 10 redshirt freshmen that are playing significant time on our team. That's exciting for the future, but at the same time, our job is to be 1-0 this week. So I think the bye week helped us in that process. How hard is it to be a coaching staff going get into things like that when people leave in the middle of the season or injuries happen and having to play younger guys? How how difficult is that as a coaching staff on evaluating who to put out there and try to get them to get ready for game days in such a short period? I think it's probably two different situations. You know, In, in the one situation, when, when any player decides to transfer – it's always it's always disappointing to us as coaches because I think sometimes we, we we have a little bit more perspective on it than they do, and we know there's going to be tough times in a player's career. And all you have to do is look at the Knights in the NFL page on our website. You'll see eight players currently playing in the NFL from Rutgers who didn't play a snap in their first two years. But I, I think that the nature – of of recruiting and the nature of websites and and analysts is to think that if a player doesn't get on the field in his first two years that for some reason that's not success but success happens for everybody at a different pace uh, when you talk about making the evaluations and, and getting the young players ready that's what we do and i see it as an exciting thing when i see anthony chaffee and the dear barnwell and delon stevenson in practice the only emotion I feel is excitement, and I see those guys, they're, they're going to be spectacular players in our system. How soon that happens, I don't know. I can't force that to happen, but I know this. They've already started to make plays, and, and I think that'll be exciting for everybody to see on Saturday. Well, that leads us into our first tweet question of the night. Uh, that comes from Chris Waskey on Twitter. With that very question, Barnwell, DeLon Stevenson, Chaffee, <laughs> Are they ready? So when you talk about the excitement factor, I'll, I'll kind of rephrase this question for a moment. What excites you about them? Uh, because I, I see guys that are, that are, are attention to detail oriented. I, I see guys that play with great effort. We've got an excellent system on defense here at Rutgers. It's been proven, it's been proven over the test of time, year in and year out. And, and these players were recruited to play in this system. So as long as they are willing to put in the preparation – as long as they're willing to play with the effort that we ask them to, and they have, that to me is, is what is the most exciting. Now, certainly every player gets better with experience. And when you play young players from time to time, they're, they're going to make some decisions that you're going to coach them to make differently the next time. That's all part of the process. But I think the coaching staff and their teammates have full confidence that they can go out there and do the job we're going to ask them to do on Saturday. Do you believe Xavi had a coming out game this past Louisville game? I don't know if it's a coming out game. I, I think uh, those kind of expressions are for people like you in the media, Eric. Um, you know, the, the, but, uh, but, but what I saw from Anthony was uh, a lot of things that built up to those moments. And, and I think if you looked at the two previous games, you'll see Anthony do a lot of really good things on special teams. And when guys do it on special teams, it never surprises me that they do it on, on offense or defense. Let's take our first phone call of the night. We're going to check in with Adam in New Brunswick. He's up first here on the Kyle Flood Show. Adam, go ahead. What's up? Uh, yes. Um, I just want to say, first of all, Coach Flood, I appreciate what you're doing for the program. And, Eric, you're really our inspiration. Um, my question is that uh, given that Rutgers is going to be in the Big Ten next season, that we're going to have a stronger schedule, do you think that the team we have can be a national national championship caliber team like um, Alabama and all these other big teams? Well, the first, I actually have a question for you, Adam. Well, I just lost him because we're having uh, some technical issues. I have to believe that he's listening on air. And, yeah. and I struggle to understand how he could be in New Brunswick and not be at Brother Jimmy's. That's a great question. It's a, it's a major concern of mine right now. Uh, but I, but you know, his question is is about you know the future of the program and and right now we're focused on being one and over as Houston, but we're not we're certainly not naive to what the future holds for our program. Uh, but I would tell you this from from the moment I came here in, in 2005, every player we recruited, we had the intention of, of of coaching that player to help us win a national championship, and that's always been our goal, and we've always evaluated with that thought in mind. Well, 
couple of other things to, to pop up from the game a couple of weeks ago and things you're working on. Gary Nova uh, struggled in the game. You had some trouble uh, with protection as well. So what did Gary take out of that experience uh, in that game and your offensive line in terms of uh, going against one of the finest defensive fronts that I think that we'll see all year, if not the best? They've got an excellent team. And I think what, what the whole offense can really take out of it is the, the, we need to run the ball better. Yeah. And I know I say that every week, but, uh, but I think you saw it play out in that game. We didn't do a good enough job running the football in the first half, and that led to a lot of the protection issues we had because if you get – you talk to these guys in the corner over here on our defensive line, if you give a defensive line an offense that's off schedule, uh, there's nothing they like better because then they, could, they can just play past defense. And that got us a little bit, our inability to run the ball early. We were able to run it a little bit better in the second half, but possessions are limited. You're trying to play catch up, so there's not as many opportunities when you get to the second half of a game like that. And I think, you know, for Gary specifically, as he goes through the game and as some of those plays break down in front of him, those decisions become even more critical. The, the decisions you make when a play breaks down, sometimes you're going to have to take the sack. Sometimes you're going to have to scramble and run. And when you do throw it, you've got to make sure you're throwing it to the people that you're supposed to be throwing it to when the protection is stressed. As you talked about the defensive line, did you enforce on this by week a little bit more about the scoop and score? Because you know we don't touch the ball too much, but when you get those opportunities, sometimes they need to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And if we, if we can get the ball out in the open, we want to scoop and score. The first priority is getting possession of the ball. And I know that that was really first and foremost on David's mind. Uh, but I think, again, like anything else, you know, the, the more it happens, the better you get at it. And, and I'm sure given an opportunity again, uh, you're going to see David uh, running that ball into the end zone. Well, I, I think what was particularly, uh, not, I don't even want to say encouraging, but you look at the, the plays that the defense made, particularly in the second half, and special teams too, whether it's Jamal blocking the kick, whether it's uh, D David coming up with the fumble off of Chaffee's sack and strip. Uh, some of those plays with the bend but don't break and come up with, in the critical times for a coach I would think that's got to be particularly encouraging. Yeah, there's no doubt. But I, I, I never at any point in the season thought we wouldn't make those plays. Mm -hmm. And, again, when, you, when you're a little younger at some positions than others, there's going to be a learning curve involved. But uh, we've, got a, we've got a lot of talent over there on that defense. And, and now as we move into the Houston week, you know, we get the challenge of the spread offense again. And, and I know that in that SMU game, the last time we faced an offense similar to this, although not the same, we really played at a high level for three quarters, and now it's going to be critical that we do it for four and possibly longer if need be. Is it harder to spread, spread you know, going into practice? Is it harder going against a spread deep offense as you get your scout team lined up, or is it easy, you know, going up versus a pro style where you can line up together with your guys going one-on-one -on -one versus the best? I think if you play a pro style team, then there's going to be a certain amount of things you can do good on good. Uh, at the end of the day, a zone combination is a zone combination, and a gap scheme double team is a gap scheme double team, and a and a fade route is a fade route, and a slant is a slant. So there's a lot of things, to, no matter what the style of offense is, that we can do together. And then there's always going to be some things unique to what they do. And, and Tony Levine's got an excellent football team, and, and they do present some challenges to you on offense that we needed specifically to make sure we could get ready for. We want you to be a part of the program tonight. Our telephone number, 855-FLOOD-44, 855-356-6344. Tweet us your questions at our football. And if you're in attendance here at Brother Jimmy's, We've got our microphone right up front. We want you to come on up, ask the coach a question. You'll get live on scarletknights.com and 1450 WCTC here in New Brunswick. So please come on up front, see our man Jimmy here, appropriately enough, and he will get you on the air with us. Let's take our first time out of the night. We've got a lot to get into. We're going to preview Houston in just a little bit, get into that, and we'll get into some other things as well surrounding Rutgers when we come back. This is the Kyle Flood Show. You may already know that AT&T is the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. And now independent researchers confirm that AT&T 4G LTE is also the most reliable. Whether you're connecting with family or getting the job done, you want a wireless network you can count on. AT&T, the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Rethink possible. AT&T reminds you to never text and drive. It can wait. Speed claim based on national carrier's average 4G LTE download speeds reliability claim based on data transfer completion rates on nationwide 4G LTE networks. 4G LTE not available everywhere. The chalkboard. Sweeps, screens, every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. 
UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. What's up, Rutgers? Y'all ready for some football? Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick is your headquarters for Scarlet Night Football, as well as your home for the Jets, Giants, and all your favorite NFL teams. With over 30 HDTVs, we serve up all the NFL action on Sunday and Monday nights with amazing food and drink specials all game long. So come on down to Brother Jimmy's and put some south in your mouth. For reservations and event information, visit us at brotherjimmy's.com. Brother Jimmy's Barbecue, located at 5 Eastern Avenue, New Brunswick, New Jersey. See y'all soon. University Radiology helps keep Rutgers athletes in the game. We can help you stay on top of yours. Whether your child has a sports injury, your back hurts, or you need a digital mammogram, we have the right radiology specialist to work with your doctor to make the right diagnosis. You wouldn't have your family doctor perform your heart surgery, you'd ask a specialist. University Radiology has all the right specialists to help keep you at the top of your game. For more information, visit universityradiology.com. at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick for this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Rutgers getting set to host Houston. And it is homecoming weekend this weekend. Excellent crowd expected. And it's a 12 noon start. So we want to urge you to get to the building early. Get obviously out into the parking lot. There's nothing wrong with a little morning tailgating. Get out there. Get your day started. Ray will be out there certainly looking for some free food. We need you to be lined up. But also importantly in the stadium early. Absolutely, and and no greater example than the last home game we played against Arkansas in terms of the effect that the, the student body, the crowd, the 12th man can really have on a game. And, and I want to urge the fans to get in there early because you, you do have an effect, you do make a difference, and um, it's certainly not bad to remind them that Houston's coming in with a freshman quarterback. Can we talk about this bonfire that happened the other night? That Absolutely. I, I wish I knew about it. Coach, I would have came through. Well, <laughs> here's the thing, Eric. If, if we tell you about the bonfire, then nobody says hello to me. Uh, so, <laughs> no, but the bonfire was excellent. Carrie Locke and her staff, they do a great job. They had a lot of the spirit groups there. A lot of the players who didn't have class were able to get there. And it was a, a little bit of a, a pep rally type situation that we did it last year for homecoming as well. And I think it's a, I think it's great to, to really generate some goodwill in the student body. Well, you have a question from a couple of young ladies here in attendance tonight. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Amanda, and I'm from Westfield, New Jersey. Okay. Have you finished your homework? Yes. Okay, then you can ask a question. <laughs> okay. Um, what concerns you most about the Houston game? I'll tell you, the... the Concern is, is probably a good word because I think that's, that's what coaches live with every day. And, and you watch the film on the other team, and they play a lot of players on defense. They play nine defensive linemen in the game. So they're going to have fresh players in the game, and, and they've played some really good defense over the course of the year. And on offense, they almost do the same thing at the wide receiver position. They, they've got a lot of people who can make plays in their system, and they're not only going to spread you with the width of the field, they're going to challenge you vertically down the field. So I think you know, the amount of players they have on their team that can, that can make plays presents a great challenge for us this weekend. Does your friend have a question? Um, this is my sister. Oh, your sister. I'm sorry. What's your name? Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Have you finished your homework, Jessica? Some of it. Okay, then you can only ask some of a question. <laughs> Did you finish the math part of your homework? Because I'm a little partial to mathematics. <laughs> no. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. We'll let you ask anyway. They're conferring. Um, <laughs> how many players do you have on your team altogether? I believe right now the running number is 103. So we have quite a few players on the team. And, uh, you know, the NCAA has rules about how many you can bring to training camp. But once school starts, it's unlimited. So if you guys want to come out and try, the walk-on tryouts are in January. And you come down to the bubble and, and, uh, and we run you in the 40 and we see how many push-ups you can do and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, that's all right. <laughs> I'll be on. I'll be on the field for the chew and dance thing. I love that. That is awesome. Congratulations, Excellent. and I look forward to seeing you out there. Terrific question. Our young friends from Westfield. 
Uh, we got another couple of questions here on Twitter. Coach, this one from John Newman. Without giving away too much, will we see some def different defensive looks against the spread than we saw against Fresno and SMU? For those who don't know, Houston is a spread offense team. I think, uh, you know, when, when John asked if we're going to see any different looks, I don't know that you'll see any different looks. You, you might see uh, different pieces of our system uh, in effect for the game, and, and I think what you'll see now is a, a defense that's had an opportunity to play against this style of offense two other times, and, and there's no doubt the more you do it, the better you get at it. So when you get into game planning for this game, when do you really start up coming off of a bye week in those extra few days? Do you try to practice and get fits in of the spread offense in right in the first week going into the, into your bye week, or do you try to get in a little bit later? We did some things the first week, good on good, but trying to do, do from a formational standpoint uh, some of the things that our defense would see in terms of spread formations, but we didn't put in the Houston game plan really until Sunday. And by putting it in Sunday, it really gives us one extra day than we would have in a normal game week, and I think that's a good thing because – you know, bye weeks serve two purposes. Well, maybe th I'll say three purposes. The one is, is you get a chance to get your team a little bit healthier, depending on what your health situation is. It also gives you a little bit of a jump on your next opponent, but it's also got to prepare you for the rest of the season. And, and I think balancing that is, is really the job of us uh, as a coaching staff. And, and I felt good that having that extra day on Sunday would really allow us to, to move the game plan along. With Houston, uh, their head coach, Tony Levine, uh, a guy that you know a little bit, um, He's in his second year as well. You're in very similar situations. He's a younger guy uh, like yourself. Uh, Coach, uh, tell us about Coach Levine and the program that he runs. I got a chance to meet Tony uh, at an event before either of us had coached a game. And, and, uh, and we spent a couple hours together, and I really enjoyed speaking with him. He has had a similar career path to mine in that he was a career assistant until getting the Houston job. He was the special teams coordinator there uh, under their previous head coach and, and just somebody that I, I felt like was a really good person and a really sharp guy, really smart football coach. And, and I think that's played out. You know, they didn't, they didn't have the success they wanted last year in his first year, but now I think you're seeing the rewards of all the hard work and efforts they put in that year because you know, they're a 5-1 and one football team that's one point from being 6-0 and, oh and, and, and a really talented team with some young players that's got a bright future. And obviously you've seen the film, of course, but you got a thousand things going on. Do you actually get to watch the live game of that BYU-Houston game at the time last Saturday, or were you all doing something else, you know, with the, either with the game plan or you with the family? I was, I was actually out recruiting at the beginning of it. I caught a little bit of it in the middle, and then I was with my family for the end of it. So it was a little bit of all, okay. all those things. But, uh, but we DVR all of them, and, and we make sure that we take a look at it on the, on the TV copy and the coach's copy just to make sure there's nothing that we're missing. Uh, and it, it, it doesn't take you long when you put the film on to see that they have a good football team. And, and we're looking forward to it because it's, uh, it seems like it's been too long since we got a chance to play. So we can't wait to get back out there. Got another question from a gentleman here in attendance at Brother Jimmy. Sir, what's your name? Matt Allison from Princeton, New Jersey. And Coach, it's great to see you here. And I got to tell you, we've been watching you every weekend, uh, running up and down the sidelines. Got a little emotional last week. Uh, and I, the million-dollar question is, uh, when you approach the referees, there's a controversial question or issue or play. I, I see you're in their face, but do they give you an answer? Uh, you know, is there a conversation there? They, uh, they've got a tough job. You know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of really, really talented athletes moving at a very fast pace, and they're, and they're trying to make split-second decisions. And, and, and you're right, the game is emotional, right? That's one of the, the beautiful things about football is, is – I learned this in high school from my high school coach, Vinnie O'Connor. He says, he says football at its, at, its, at its essence is a game of emotion. And, and that's the players and that's the coaches. And what I've found is that the officials that I've worked with that I've really respected the most have been the ones who have allowed you to be emotional and then they give you the answer. And, and, and we've got a lot of good ones in this conference. And more often than not, they do give you an answer. And, and sometimes they'll say to you, hey, listen, I didn't make that call. Give me a play. I'll go get the answer for you. And, and – and then there's other times where you'd maybe like them to stop the game if there's an illegal player in the game and you leave the coach's box and, and uh, sometimes you have more success than others. But, uh, but, but I, as I said, they, uh, they have a tough job to do and, and I think our officials in the American Athletic Conference are the best in the country. Well, keep, it, keep it going. You're doing great. Thank you. Hey, Coach. All right, that kind of leads me to something that uh, I was curious about because uh, in the NFL this weekend there was an interesting – Scenario, and it was right up the road at the Meadowlands with the Jets and the Patriots. Game went to overtime, and the Patriots were called on a 56-yard uh, field goal attempt by the Jets on a penalty in overtime for one player pushing another player into the offensive line uh, to try to gain some leverage. New rule this year, they threw the flag, 
And it's interesting in that it obviously ended up being a big difference in the ball game, 15 yard on sportsman like penalty. Now, came out after the game that one of the coaches, whether it be Rex Ryan or whoever, had kind of had a conversation with one of the officials before the game and mentioned that, hey, maybe you want to look for something like this. My question for you is, how often does that happen with coaches and with officials? Is that kind of an anomaly or is that something that we see a lot? I think the, the conversation between the coaches and the officials prior to the game happens weekly. And the officials come to see each head coach before the game. And, and what you do is you explain to them, hey, listen, we, we may have a formation that's a little bit unique this year that we're going to use. And you want to make sure you explain it to them so that the spur of the moment it doesn't get called as an illegal formation of any kind. And, uh, and so we've done that, thing, that from time to time. The part that you're describing is really like an illegal technique. Right. And any coach can have a player who goes off the reservation from the time to time. And, but if you do see on film something that is repeated over and over again, a pattern of behavior, and you feel that it's not within the rules, you present that to the officials. And you do that earlier in the week. And I think usually what happens at that point is, is they will generally contact the other team and say, hey, listen, we've seen this on your film a number of times. It's not legal. Be careful. You're going to get a penalty called. I don't know if that's the case in the NFL. I just know that right. that's, that's the way it works in our league. That doesn't happen as often. I think we've got a very well-coached league. You don't see that too often. But, but if you do see something that's a pattern of behavior, that you can alert the league office just to hopefully get it corrected before the game even starts. I feel like that rule's been in, in for a while, Coach. Because I, I remember when we were taught we, that no one could push us leading into the guard was they would throw the flag at, is that new to the NFL? Or is I, I don't know. I don't know if it's new. To, it has been in college football yeah. for quite some they, time. They I, just implemented it officially last year in the NFL. It was so the, you could the, do that before. It, I, I guess you could do some version of it before. Where yeah. Coach Belichick said that he thought it was you couldn't do it to the second level, and that was his explanation. But it turns out maybe they removed that second level part of it, and mm -hmm. you know that's exactly what happened. I but, think on the whole, it's it's a good rule, and it's in the best interest of the safety of the players to to, to have it that way. But I I didn't know I didn't know that it wasn't an NFL rule. And and with such the uh, certainly the um, emphasis on player safety in the league now, uh, that became a part of it, and the players wanted a part of it. Coach, our old buddy's back. This is my guy right here, and I noticed today on Twitter. He was inviting people down here for us. He's trying to rally up the crowd Always. at Brother Jimmy's. I don't know if that gets him a couple onion rings or something on the house. I'm not sure exactly how that works, but, but I know my man was working today. You know it. Scott, what's up? Not much, guys. Uh, Coach, my question's for you. I disagree, Scott. There's a lot of things that are up. We've got a game this Saturday at <laughs> Big 12 noon at High Point Solutions Stadium. Uh, well, I'll be there. You know it. Uh, my question is, after the big upset loss, Louisville losing to UCF, you guys are right back in the AAC title picture. How do you keep the guys' heads on straight and have them focus one game at a time instead of the whole big picture? I never felt that we were out of it. And, uh, and I, I know maybe from a fan perspective because of how you look at things, you see it as a big upset. It did not, it, that game did not surprise me. And I think this conference will be very competitive at the end of the year. People will see that. And I, I don't think in college football in general there's just that much of a difference between a lot of the teams. I think at the end of the year, there'll be a couple of elite teams that will arise, and I think there'll be a lot of teams that are very good football teams. And in, in that kind of scenario where there's so much parity, it is critical every week that your focus is on being 1-0. and And to look at the big picture is the job of the media and is the job of the fans, and I know it's fun to do. And But for us as coaches and for those guys in the corner as players – if you take your eye off of being 1-0 at all during the week, you're putting yourself at risk of, of, of allowing somebody to take that away from you. All right, great. Thanks, Coach. See you Saturday. Scott, Thank you for coming. Great job. I'll see you in that student it, section. It reminds uh, me that uh, Scott was our winner last time out. We have got a giveaway tonight courtesy of Brother Jimmy's. We've got a hat, T-shirt, Brother Jimmy's cookbook, and a $25 gift card that we're going to give away. Uh, when you came in, if you got, uh, you should have gotten a ticket. If you didn't get your ticket, make sure you see the folks up front. Get your ticket. We're going to have our drawing in just a little bit before the end of the show. But it, this week, we threw in the gift card. I shouldn't say we. The great folks from Brother Jimmy threw we in the gift credit, card. I take credit for a lot of things. I'll, I'll let that one to themselves. <laughs> we'll take another time out right now. A lot more to discuss over the next half hour as Rutgers prepares for Houston on homecoming weekend this Saturday. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Excuse me, is that your Diet Pepsi? Sophia Vergara. Hi, uh, yeah, I just, uh, <clears throat> this is my Diet Pepsi. I love Diet Pepsi. Do you love every sip? 
Uh, nothing is better than drinking a refreshing Diet Pepsi and just reveling in its crisp, delicious taste. Well, you know what they say. If you love something, let it go. And if it comes back, it was meant to be. So I should set this Diet Pepsi free and wait for it to come back. Then it'll be more delicious than ever. Would you hold my Diet Pepsi for me? I'd love to. Thank you. What happens now? Go, get out of here. It can't come back to you if you're standing next to it. Thanks, Sophia. I'll wait for you, Diet Pepsi. The only thing better than an ice-cold Diet Pepsi is a free ice-cold Diet Pepsi. Love every sip at DietPepsi.com. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Rutgers football fans, it's time to join the 1,200-plus members of the Rutgers Touchdown Club in supporting Rutgers football 365 days a year. To become a member, please visit us at RutgersTVClub.com. Your membership includes regular meetings with Rutgers football coaches, discounts from local vendors, bus trips and giveaways, and a whole lot more. It's time for you to show your Rutgers spirit by joining the Touchdown Club today. Also, please support the team by purchasing 50-50 chances prior to each home game in the stadium parking lots. Visit us at RutgersTVClub.com for more information. Go Rutgers! Have you downloaded ShopRite's mobile app? The ShopRite app has plenty of new features. Now load digital coupons right to your Price Plus Club card anytime or anywhere. It's so easy. Simply view our weekly digital coupon offers, pick and click, and the coupon will automatically be loaded to your Price Plus Club card. You can also sign up to view our weekly circular, create a shopping list, plus view thousands of recipes, and add the ingredients to your shopping list. Visit ShopRite.com for more details. Download your free ShopRite app today. We are back at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick on 1450 WCTC New Brunswick and on scarletknights.com. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Thanks so much for joining us. Rutgers preparing to take on uh, the University of Houston this Saturday. The Cougars at 5-1 and one on the season and the Scarlet Knights at 4-2. and two. It's a new kind of highlighter I got there, Coach. I like it. It doesn't uh, smudge. That's, <laughs> no, I'm looking at that. Yeah, I've never seen that before. You know what? You've got to find all kinds of things when you're trying to write stuff down in a hurry. <laughs> at any rate, um, you know, Eric, uh, as we get into uh, this season, or the second half of this season, I just I wanted to ask you, and uh, appropriately enough, in the second half of the show, what have you seen here in the first half of the season that – that you like, and, and what are you looking forward to in the second half? You know, I'm loving I'm loving the way this team is looking so far. You know, the, especially the defense they're flying around. I love how Rutgers we always we don't re, we don't rebuild we reload with players on the defensive side. And I love to see that, especially the offensive side too. Now putting up we're putting up points on the board, which is great to see because I know playing as a defense, you love when the offense puts points on the board, especially when you go out there knowing that you have a lead out there. So the offense is really maturing out there. We got some great players, got some great talent, and like I said, the defense. I just love being how we reload out there every single year. We bring the passion. We fly around. That's what we do here at Rutgers, right, Coach? That's right. That's right. And, and a lot of a lot of young, talented players running around with some more established players on defense. You know, to to be able to mix some of the youth in with guys like Isaac Holmes and Jamil Morrell and David Maluski and Marcus Thompson. I mean, it, it's a great blend of not just established players but young ones too. You know, to mention one of those young ones, and we've talked about him a good amount this year, but I don't know that he still. Uh, has gotten the attention that he deserves for as productive as he's been. Steven Longa in the middle of that defensive, uh, or in the middle of the linebacking core, 61 tackles this year, six for loss, three sacks. It seems like when there's a big play to be made on defense, he's right in the middle of it. Steven runs really well, and I, I said this before the season to a couple people that I, I thought he he closed on the ball in, in a way that, very few players we've had here. The guy he reminded me of was Damaso Munoz and the way he closed Damaso. on the ball. And, and I think guys who remember him, I remember us blocking him on the scout team and watching him erase plays and then in scrimmages. And, and then when he got his opportunity to play, he certainly took advantage of it. So that was really what it reminded me of. And, and then you, in, in more recent years, guys like Kasim Green you know, moved down from safety to that linebacker position and can close on the ball. But here's Stephen Longa as a redshirt freshman 
uh, doing it, I think it really shows he, you know, he, he's got a bright future ahead of him, and he, he's already become one of the focal points of our defense. And how is he as a leader on the defense now, especially – He's the, he's the main guy calling the plays out there. Does he, you ever see him get confused out there or having to work extra hard in a film room, or does it come to him naturally, all the formations and the adjustments? No, I, I think he does a good job of, of understanding how to put all the pieces in the right place, but I think the other part of that is to have a guy like Jamil Morrell and Isaac Holmes in front of him, uh, to have a guy like Jamal Morrell next to him, have a guy like Lorenzo Waters behind him, you know, those are the guys that help him communicate that message really on all three levels. And, and I don't think it could ever be just one guy. Certainly the Mike linebacker's got to start the process. But you need the people on every level to echo that and, and make sure every, everything's in order. You know, Eric mentioned the word leader in there. Uh, I talked to Brandon Coleman the other day about this, about being one of the leaders on offense. T take me inside the leadership group, the, the guys that you consider the leaders on this team and the impact that they have made this season. I think it has to it has to start with your captains because our, our players voted for people to be captains. So you have guys like Brandon Coleman and Gary Nova on offense who are in their fourth year in the program. And then you have guys like Jamal and Jamil Morell on defense. So that's where it starts. Now, it never just ends with your captains because any really successful team I've been a part of has had a lot of leadership. And... This leadership group on this team took some time to develop because we had some really strong leaders in the group that just left us a year ago. And, and now you see guys like Marcus Thompson, who's going to be one of our game captains this week, and he has earned that. And he is as good an example as we have in our program of how to play the game. The passion that he plays with is, is unmatched and is really, really enjoyable to watch. And, and then you also have guys like Karan Pratt, who – in his career has done everything we've asked him to do and now in, in in this his senior year has been asked to take on a little bit of a bigger role and has really blossomed in that role not just on offense but we put him back there at kickoff return he scores a touchdown we put him at flyer he makes the tackle you know, those are the things really to me that that create leaders on your team because leadership has to begin with actions and, and with a guy like Karan, a guy that made it clear at the beginning of the year he wanted to be on special teams, even though he knows he's going to be on the field on offense a lot more often than not. Absolutely, and I, I think that, and the guy sit, sitting next to me on my left is a, is a great example of it as well, is the culture that we've built at Rutgers. I think our players have a tremendous appreciation for what the, for the impact that special teams can have on being 1-0 each week. And, and that's, a, to take it back to this week's game, one of the great challenges of this game and that is that is really that's a lot of fun for us as coaches and for players because we're competitive we get to match our special teams against one of the finest special teams groups in the country led by a head coach who was a special teams coordinator so that's gonna be a lot of fun to watch on saturday i want to get a little bit back into talk about this conference and this whole mix-up and everything a lot of people are talking about how Louisville's schedule was so weak but then you see how well we strong we played them and then you see the upset from ucf last week do you think our conference finally now has some respect in seeing that there are elite teams in this conference that can go out there and play versus anybody any day? I, I, don't, I don't know that. I don't know what the public perception is. I, don't, I try not to spend too much time even thinking about it. I, I do know this. If you want respect as a football team, go out and be 1-0. If you want respect as a conference, when you play at a conference, be 1-0. And at the end of the year, have strong teams and then have a strong presence in the bowls and win your bowl games. I think if this conference does that at the end of the year, we'll get all the respect we deserve. You know, the, the respect or disrespect that any team gets halfway through a season, to me, is of no interest because we, we, we have too much football left to play. We want you to be a part of the program. Again, if you're in attendance here at Brother Jimmy's, come on up front, ask your question for the coach, tweet us your questions at our football, and also give us a call at 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. I, I want to hit on this for one sec because you mentioned Karan Pratt, and I don't think we've hit this enough with these two guys, Karan and Brandon Coleman, for their work and their the respect level off the field. First of all, Brandon earlier this year, for those who don't know, was named to the All-State American Football Coaches Association Good Works team. He was a nominee. And Karan just recently named a semifinalist for the National Football Foundation's Campbell Trophy which is equivalent to the academic Heisman. Remember, we saw uh, Brian Leonard years ago won the Dratty Trophy, yep. very similar to that. Uh, as a coach, what does it mean to you to have those guys recognized for that kind of stuff? I think it's, I think it's great for our entire program. I think it, 
it's one more example to show people that, that our program is doing things the right way. I think our, our graduation rate came out today uh, officially. I don't know if it's been released officially, so I won't say it, but we're number one in our conference. Uh, if we were in our conference in the future, we'd be number two. So it's uh, anytime you're at the top, it's a, uh, it's a, it certainly says that you're doing things the right way. And, and when we talk about being the class of college football, it's not just on Saturdays for three hours. It, it's really in, in everything we do from a football standpoint, from the way we act off the field, from the way we perform in the classroom, and then to the things we do out in the community, which I think are, are every bit as important as what we do on Saturdays. That uh, will be released tomorrow, I am told, uh, but uh, give us a little I'm glad I didn't there. say it then. Well, <laughs> we are number one in our current conference, and we'd be number two in our future yeah. conference. Excellent to know. Excellent <laughs> yeah, to know, no good. doubt. Uh, we've got, uh, exactly, uh, we've got a little bit more time uh, until the bottom of the hour, so again, be a part of the program. We'll take a quick time out. More to do here at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick. Thanks for joining us. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Hey, everybody, this is Coach, and I want all you tried and true college football fans to enter the AT&T Be the Fan sweepstakes. Tackle my weekly challenge, and you might be the fan who wins a VIP trip to ESPN College Game Day. Find out how you can win at attbethefan.com. AT&T, rethink possible. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. citizens and resident aliens of the 50 U.S. states or D.C. of the age of majority. Ends 11.59 p.m. Central Time, November 29, 2013. Official rules at attbthefan.com. Void where prohibited. The chalkboard. Sweeps. Screens. Every play is drawn up and studied. When you can visualize a play, you can execute a play. The same is true in business. The more visibility you have in your supply chain, the better your business performs. That's why UPS lets you track what comes in and what goes out. Logistics is our game. See how we can help yours at thenewlogistics.com. UPS, official logistics partner of the NCAA. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. No matter what you earned your undergraduate degree in, an MBA from Rutgers Business School will help you build your brand and get you the skills you need to succeed in a tough job market. Rutgers MBA graduates get jobs. U.S. News & World Report recently ranked Rutgers among the top 20 business schools in job placement. With convenient locations in Newark, New Brunswick, Jersey City, and Morristown, Rutgers Business School offers flexible and convenient options to help you pursue your MBA full or part-time. Become part of Rutgers' passionate network of more than 30,000 business school alumni. Think MBA, think Rutgers. MBA. When I say Xerox, I know what you're thinking. Transit fares, as in the 37 billion transit fares we help collect each year. No. Oh, right. You're thinking of the 1.6 million daily customer care interactions Xerox handles, or the 900 million health insurance claims we process. So it's no surprise to you that companies depend on today's Xerox for services that simplify how work gets done, which is pretty much what we've always stood for. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. Back at Brother Jimmy's downtown New Brunswick for this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Homecoming weekend at Rutgers as the Scarlet Knights will host the University of Houston Saturday, 12 noon. Game is on ESPN News and also on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network, WOR 710 in New York, down in Philadelphia, WIP as well, and, of course, WCTC New Brunswick and on scarletknights.com. Uh, Coach, let's talk about Houston a little bit. First of all, you mentioned their freshman quarterback. That's John O'Corn. He is a true freshman, and he's had a pretty darn good season so far for Houston. I believe the number is 14 touchdowns and four interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. John's a good football player, somebody we know a lot about, somebody from St. Thomas Aquinas High School uh, down in Florida, one of the better programs you know, in the country, and actually a, a quarterback who committed to the University of Houston before ever starting a game. In high of, school. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of a unique thing, and, and, and certainly it's not unusual to have a, a quarterback not play until his senior year at St. Thomas, but, um, but to, to be offered a scholarship and commit before that is a little bit unique. But obviously, uh, Tony and his staff did a great job of evaluating him for their system and, and made a great decision because uh, he's been extremely productive this year and most dangerous when he leaves the pocket and making plays out in space. 
And he was a guy that uh, they had not necessarily planned on being their guy from day one, but they had injuries, and uh, he has certainly risen to the occasion and played well for them. Defensively, Coach, they force an awful lot of turnovers, 21 this year for their defense. We talk, whenever you face these spread offense teams, we, we spend a lot of time on that, but tell us a little bit about his defense. You know, they're a multiple defense. From, uh, schematically, the way they line up is, is very similar to how we do things. Uh, and they, they run quite a few different pressures, and they run to the football. They play a lot of people. They've got good team speed, and when they get there, they're trying to get the ball out. And as you said, 21 turnovers in six games is impressive, and, and that's really why they lead the country in turnover margin. When they have so, so many plays that they can rotate out, is it easier as an offense trying to wear them down or mix things up knowing that you have so many different players coming in and out? Or is it, you know, you just keep on sticking to your game plan and just try to wear them down as you would do? You know how Rutgers does, run the ball, run the ball, and set up the pass. And how does that set up with a game that has so many different people coming in and out the game? I think it, it uh, I don't, I think most of the teams we played, we play are, are, are very well conditioned. Now, I feel like our players are at an elite level of conditioning, so I don't know that we go into the game with the plan of, of wearing them down, but I do, think, I do believe this. If you are able to run the ball a significant amount of times in the game, you are going to test the willingness of the defense to defend those runs and, and to continue to tackle the back. We've got some big, strong backs and the, to continue to take on double teams, and, and from that standpoint, maybe mentally you can wear them down a little bit. Uh, but they're going to play enough players in the game that I, I don't know that, that that'll be an issue on Saturday. What it does for them is I believe it, it allows them as a team to run the ball really well. And, and it's certainly something that we do here as well with the, with the amount of defensive linemen we play in a game. Special teams are similar in that they block an awful lot of kicks. Uh, they're, they're right up there in that category as well. What do we see special teams-wise from them? They, they've blocked three kicks already, and, they're, and all of them have been field goals. And... and you know, they have not faced a pro-style punt team like us this year. They've faced all spread punts. Uh, so we'll see what they have uh, in store for us this Saturday. But they have blocked three field goals. Their defensive linemen do a very good job with the technique that they coach in terms of getting into the backfield. And, and, uh, and one of them they took back for a touchdown. Well, now, now that you have younger, guy, younger guys in the deep back and you're play, playing the spread offense, how important is it going to be for them to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups and not allow people to get behind them in the secondary? There's no doubt. You're exactly right. At, you know, we're going to play some zone coverage and we're going to play some man coverage just like we do every game. And at some point, they're going to be in a man-to-man -man situation and they have to win. And guys like Anthony Chaffee, guys like Nadir Barnwell, a guy like Garif Glashen who comes back to us this week who's got experience. You know, every team I've been a part of that, that plays at a high level, their fourth and fifth-year players play at a high level. And Garif is one of those guys for us, and we certainly need him to perform this week. And how much uh, – Garif has missed the last couple of games uh, with some uh, personal uh, things to take care of. But on the on the other side, with the two young guys and Chaffee and Barnwell back there, how, and DeLon Stevenson for that matter as well, how much can they lean on Garif because of his experience? I, I think he certainly helps in the preparation. You know, On game day, you have to do your job. Nobody can do it for you. And even though the, you know, they'll be backed up by you know, guys like uh, Jeremy Deering and Lorenzo Waters at the safety position, like I said, at some point we're gonna, we are going to play some man-to-man -man coverage, and they have to win their one-on-ones. But I think when you have an older presence in the room, whether it's Grief Glash and whether it's Jeremy Deering, whether it's Lorenzo Waters, that can help you during the week and through the process of preparing for the game. Does that actually help you during the week also? Would you, would you try to get them more lined up versus Brandon Coleman's and Karan Pratt's and the individual drills that they get to do? Or the seven-on-sevens versus good-on-good? Good? Would you try to challenge them a little bit more? We have absolutely done that. And, and that would be one of the benefits also of the bye week is the ability to do some good-on-good good work and, and make them cover guys. And, and we're fortunate because we've got – a, a nice deep receiver group with a lot of different shapes and sizes, guys like Brandon Coleman and guys like Janarian Grant, guys like John Simmons, guys like Andre Patton. So I think this over the, over the course of this entire bye week and the game prep week, that we've been able to challenge those corners so that they're seeing good people every day. Let's talk a little bit about the guys who are in attendance tonight, your defensive line. And, and you've, uh, you've talked about Isaac a little bit and Marcus Thompson as well. You know, you've got a group here where – You've got eight deep, certainly, at the very least, that you're going to play. Tell me about some of the guys on this defensive line that we may not know a whole lot about, whether it's 
Dewani Mara, who's gotten a lot of playing time this year and has been a starter really since the beginning of the year when Jamil was banged up. Tell me about some of these guys and some of the things we may not know about. Well, let me start by saying this. It does not surprise me that, that Mama Legrand is over there right next to the defensive <laughs> line. We know where her heart is <laughs> with the defensive line. Uh, you know, I think, you know, we knew the defensive line was going to be one of the strengths of our of our program, let alone our defense going into this year. And uh, But we've had some, you know, on top of the guys that were the established players, guys who've, who've won football games for us, like Isaac Holmes, like Jamil Morrell, like Marcus Thompson, we've had some other guys step up and really play at a high level, and that's exciting. And you mentioned Dewani Mira, and, and Dewani Mira's really having a, a good year, and he's getting better and better week to week. And then a guy like David Maluski, who – has been waiting a long time to get back to playing football and has converted to the defensive line and really can play any of the four positions. And that is, it just makes us a stronger group all together. And in case you, uh, you're you wondering if the future's bright, we got our man JPO over there trying to clean his hands after eating some wings, <laughs> which I appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, you know, as some of these guys move on and play at the next level, you know, we've got JPO ready to go next year, and, and he's getting healthier by the day. Julian Penix Odrick, no doubt. And, and uh, we've seen some more of Quanzel Lambert quite a bit on the defensive end spot. You know, David is such a terrific story. We've, we've talked about the, the knee surgeries. I'm getting you, uh, the knee surgeries he's gone through. I'm still having trouble getting used to him, though, in terms of the hair. Took the hair off for locks of love, <laughs> and now he's got <laughs> – Nothing up top there. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of David that, that he did that, and I, I think that that's a, 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 great, a great reason to do it. And, and I'm a fan of short hair. I think you see myself here. You know, this is <laughs> probably the longest my hair has ever been is the way it is right now. And, and, I, <laughs> and I told David anytime he needs to go to the barber, I'll take him to my barber, and, and, we'll, and we'll get him tightened up. <laughs> well, it looks good, no doubt, and, and to do that for – for that cause, so just a terrific job by David Maluski and that defensive line really doing a fine job for Rutgers this season. Well, we'll take a timeout, our final one of the night. We will come back. We'll have our drawing for our gift card, T-shirt, hat, along with the cookbook from here at Brother Jimmy's, and we will get coaches keys to the game. I wonder what they the might be. suspense is building. <laughs> Stay with us. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Excuse me. Is that your Diet Pepsi? Sophia Vergara. Ah, uh, yeah, I just, uh, <clears throat> this is my Diet Pepsi. I love Diet Pepsi. Do you love every sip? Uh, nothing is better than drinking a refreshing Diet Pepsi and just reveling in its crisp, delicious taste. Well, you know what they say. If you love something, let it go. And if it comes back, it was meant to be. So I should set this Diet Pepsi free and wait for it to come back then It'll be more delicious than ever. Would you hold my Diet Pepsi for me? I'd love to. Thank you. What happens now? Go, get out of here. It can't come back to you if you're standing next to it. Thanks, Sophia. I'll wait for you, Diet Pepsi. The only thing better than an ice-cold Diet Pepsi is a free ice-cold Diet Pepsi. Love every sip at DietPepsi.com. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Looking for the best trained in the business? Look no further. Our members at the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 456, go through a five-year nationally recognized apprenticeship program along with OSHA safety certifications producing the best trained and most up-to-date electricians in the area. Fiber optics, high voltage, lighting retrofits, solar energy, we do it all. We're also proud to be one of the first building trades locals to be recognized with a drug-free workplace program. We at IBEW 456 are like Coach Flood and the Scarlet Knights, trained and ready to get the job done. Rutgers University Center for Management Development is an international leader in delivering innovative educational solutions to strengthen the business skills of our clients. We have a focus on today's professional with contemporary programs to meet the demands of an ever-changing business environment. Find your program today by visiting our website, cmd.rutgers.edu, and upon registering, use the special 10% discount code, RURADIO, or call us directly at 732 640 1853. Back at Brother Jimmy's in downtown New Brunswick, Rutgers facing Houston this week for homecoming. Chris Carlin, Eric Legrand, and the coach 
Kyle Flood. Coach, I need you to pick a winner here for our Brother Jimmy's gift pack, which includes a $25 gift card, Brother Jimmy's hat, T-shirt, and cookbook. Pig on a hat. There we go. All right. Still didn't get my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Okay, here we go. Red ticket. 6-6-3-1-8-9. Six, six, eight, six, six, eight, here we go. Back. We got a winner. Uh, Come on up front. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, look who's back. All right. We're rewarding the youth of America for not doing their homework. I love that. Anyway. <laughs> our two young friends from Westfield are our winners tonight. Congratulations, ladies. That's awesome. Jessica, you had the winning Daddy's. ticket? Yeah? All right. Very nice. Great job. Congratulations. We'll see you wearing the hat, the T-shirt tomorrow in school maybe. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Coach. Uh, we've, uh, we're starting to approach that time once again as you prepare for Houston. Uh, I'll get to the million-dollar question in a moment, but uh, in terms of preparation for this game – uh, leading into Saturday, you've had the extra time to get ready for it. Give me a sense of uh, what concerns you the most about what Houston does. I, I, I don't know that it's, it's so much concern, but I, I think one of the keys for us is really getting acclimated as quickly as possible to the tempo that they want to play at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you do everything. It's like when you play the option. You do everything all week to try to simulate it to the best of your ability. But you'll never be able to do it with your scout team the way they do it. And it's the same thing with Houston. They want to play as fast as the officials will allow them to play in every game. And as much as we try to simulate that in practice, you can't truly simulate it perfectly. So, you know, those first couple drives of the game, I think, are going to be critical as we get acclimated to the speed of how they play. And as we're talking about coming off a of bye week, knowing that you have another one coming up, how does that, you know, sit with you as a coaching staff, knowing that you can develop your, your younger players now getting ready to go into the end of the season? But is it, do you like having the three buys or the two buys? How does that work as a coaching staff? Do you guys like it? Or do you like to get into the rhythm of, of the system and just keep on going week after week? Uh, given the opportunity to, to make the decision, I don't know that I would choose to have three, but, but we've got three. And when you get the schedule at the beginning of the year, that's our job to make sure that we make the most of it and – you know, for us right now, for me, I have a plan that goes forward through the end of the season. But that's not for the coaches and that's not for the players. They don't need to be worried about that. All their energy, all their focus should be on being 1-0 this week, and that's where I want it. Okay, so here we are. Your keys to the game this week to be 1-0 against Houston. Well, I, I know this for sure. Winning football games is not easy, but it's not complicated either. And if we can run the football and stop the run, and I know that sounds unusual. So, all right, these guys are a spread offense. They want, to, they want to throw it. <laughs> but you have to make them one-dimensional. And, uh, you know, they, these guys have run the ball this year for 165 yards a game. And so they are a very potent offense, not just throwing the ball. So stopping them from running the ball is going to be critical this week. And as we saw in our last game, running the ball is critical to the flow of our offense. And – Securing the football and taking it away, that is a great challenge of this game facing the number one team in turnover margin in the country. And then we call them want to special teams, kickoff coverage, kickoff return specifically. But uh, as you look at this team, they're very well coached on special teams. We're very well coached on special teams. They've got great athletes playing special teams. We've got great athletes playing special teams. And it's, again, one of the great challenges of this game to see who can execute their scheme uh, better than the other person. And, and that's what we enjoy so much about this game. Uh, I know that the players are chomping at the bit to get back down there in the stadium, to see the student section, to see the crowd, th to have the entire High Point Solutions Stadium behind us and creating as much distress, duress, and, and absolute mayhem as we can for the other team that's coming in. And I know they'll be ready. And I know I hadn't mentioned this before, but they have a freshman quarterback. <laughs> I'll leave that up to our guy Scott and the Riot Squad there. <laughs> well, they're ready to go, Coach. Good luck this week. I appreciate that. I look forward good to seeing everybody on Saturday. Yes, sir. Good luck, Coach. We thank everybody for coming down and joining us at the Kyle Flood Show here at Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick. We'll be here again next Wednesday night. But this Saturday, it is homecoming at High Point Solution Stadium. Rutgers facing the University of Houston. 12 noon kickoff. Be in the stadium early. Have a great week, everybody. This has been the Kyle Flood Show. 
You've been listening to The Kyle Flood Show, live from Brother Jimmy's in New Brunswick. The executive producers of the Rutgers IMG Sports Network are George Pine and Vince Sutton. Associate producers Joe Potter, Chris Ferris, and John Willie. Network manager Brad Law. I'm staff announcer Carl Shannon. Special thanks to Rutgers Athletic Director Julie Herman and the staff and management of flagship station WCTC. 